recording. Okay, we're live. Three, two, one. Hello, everyone. Welcome to episode 105 of the Security Podcast on the In30 Network. We are talking antivirus viruses. I, I think that's the most alliterative name I can come up with to talk about antivirus. I mean, who, who wants 30 minutes on antivirus? But I think Tom, anybody can do it. Tom can do it. No, don't put that on me. Okay, well, let's ask a more important question. And we're recording this the eve of, or not even the eve, hours before the $1.5 billion Powerball. And we both signed pledges to say that if we won, we will continue the podcast. Yes, absolutely. Okay, we are just not ending midstream yeah. and just saying, screw you guys, go home. I, I, do, I do have to say, <laughs> if I've won the Powerball, which I don't know how I could win, but if I did... I would personally buy Adobe, and I would close the Flash division. And if I had any leftover money, I'd try to buy off Java out of Oracle, and I would shut that down too. They can need a little more than uh, a billion dollars, but that's okay. Webster 2016, vote well, for me. <laughs> well, I, I was thinking of... If I won the Powerball jackpot, I would give that guy who keeps on posting the incorrect math of uh, giving every American $4.36 because he forgot a power of 10, <laughs> a free tutoring <laughs> lesson in math. <laughs> that, that, that's, I think, what I would do. I would give him his $4.36. And then when he says, but I thought it was $4.3 million, say, well, next time do some math. Math correctly, people. So just just remember that uh, the lottery uh, and, you know, I, I I did fall for the, the frenzy. So I'm, I'm not innocent in this, but the lottery is just a tax against people who can't do math. It's also a regressive tax, a tax where poor people are paying more money. Yeah, because rich people don't buy lottery tickets. But I, I mean, look, it's a billion dollars. I mean, for two bucks, yeah, why not? For two bucks for for a billion dollars. OK, sure. I will say it's inflation. I remember back in the day it was one dollar. <laughs> okay. Well, what are we talking about? Antivirus. Yes, yes, we are talking about antivirus, specifically uh, <clears throat> one antivirus at the start. But then, then the topics just going to devolve into the smattering of AV topics, and we will answer the question: Is antivirus really worth it? Should you go out and buy something for your computer, your loved one's computer? to try to keep all the nastiness out if you're still running Windows. Can I spoil it right now? Yes. No. Right, no. Okay, let's continue. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So if you don't want to hear the rest of the story, no, don't buy antivirus. Use the stuff Microsoft has got built into Windows 8 and Windows 10. If you're still on 7, install Microsoft Security Essentials. Call it a day because Windows Update handles all of it, and uh, it's actually made properly, I should say. It's made better than its competition. Uh, it won't introduce any nasty problems into your system. Uh, oh, this sorry. company, yeah, this company we're talking about right now, though, is Trend Micro, very popular. They sound like a real Trend Micro security. That sounds like a good, good programming security name. I mean, in a tech yes. would be a little bit better, but absolutely, or some Sprocket security, something like that. So if uh, if you didn't know, if you weren't aware. Uh, Google has got this security division called Project Zero, and they literally have put a bunch of hackers into a building, and they said, hey, hack stuff all day long and make it safer for the world. Hack Google stuff, hack other people's stuff, hack open source stuff, hack closed source stuff, hack the world, hack the planet, and then give people a 90-day disclosure notice, and hopefully they listen and make their product safer. Uh, it's it's Google using their power for good. It's Google pushing these people who write insecure software. And I admit it, I've written software. I've written some really horrible, terrible, buggy, security hole written software in my day. Uh, and if I got one of these letters from Google saying, hey, you've got 90 days to fix this before we go public, um, I would say, oh, <laughs> sir, yes, sir, I will get right on it uh, because I don't want to be known as the guy who releases horrible software. Um, but what Trend Micro did is they've got this 
antivirus program for Windows. Uh, by uh, it, it comes with this thing called Password Manager. It's a password vault application, uh, which is great. You know, everyone loves password managers, and now the AV companies are getting in on that business too. Uh, the bad news is they included a whole bunch of code and a whole bunch of libraries. They included Node.js running an API. I'm gonna. I promise I will get past the tech speak here in just a bit. Uh, that will bind itself to all interfaces on the machine, not just localhost. What this means is it's basically running a server on your computer, but it's not just listening internally. It's not just a program running on the inside of your computer. It's listening for input on the outside. So if your computer is hooked directly to the internet or if there's a bad actor on your local network that's sending your computer commands, it will take these commands and execute them meaning that someone can literally get full command line access to your application or, or to your computer through this broken antivirus program. Well, what could possibly go wrong? I mean, you just said it, but... Well, you know, you could, you could execute code. You could run a crypto locker. You could look at stuff. You could install key lockers. You could take screenshots and move them out of the system. You could really do anything you want to because you are inside that system. Is there an IFTTT type thing that I can set up that if I send yeah. a poorly crafted email, I want this listener to listen in and do something? Uh, if they were running this and they were exposed to the internet, absolutely. Absolutely you could. Actually, you wouldn't even need to get that fancy. You would just run a reverse shell and have that computer constantly connect back to you. I mean, this... This is the stuff that hackers and pen testers absolutely love to see. And not just, you know, the good hackers and pen testers. We're talking about, you know, bad guys and criminals and people that want to make zombie botnets out of computers out there. Everyone loves to see this. I mean, it's horrible. It's awful. But it's a beautiful train wreck in a way because, you know, on that one pen test job that's really difficult – but you know the company's got Trend Micro, so you try it, and lo and behold, you've got it. You exfiltrate their entire customer database, and you walk away with your report in hand saying, yes, company hacked, you should fix this, hand it to them, smile, and walk away, and then get paid. I, I want to figure um, out a way how we can integrate the Internet of Things into this. Can we get my downloadable content washing machine to send a, a, a poorly crafted remote code execution to my computer and hijack it. Uh, I actually probably <clears throat> there's there's probably a way. Um, so why do people do this? It sounds like it, it just it's <sighs> easy. It's the easy way out. If we need this running. We don't want some other virus scan. We don't want Microsoft Security Essentials to stop this. So we make it important, or we leave it on, and we make sure it doesn't come back. Well, I, their, Trend Micro's heart was in the right place, right? We, we can't say they're malicious. We can't say they're evil. Uh, we can say that they have pretty atrocious code because there's a lot of issues here. Um, but they were trying to do the right thing, right? They're saying, okay, what do our customers need now? Well, password managers offer good security, but we don't want to tell our customers to go to LastPass. We want them to give us money. So let's include a password manager in our AV system, in our new update. And so they built one, and they built it really, really poorly. Um, <clears throat> so, so poorly that it's become, you know, one of the worst types of vulnerabilities you can have in your system, right? This is remote code execution. This is wide open access to the Internet. Um, if, if your computer is hooked directly to the internet, please don't do that. Hook it to a router or something like that, uh, because that would be way, way better. Um, but, you know, this type of vulnerability is definitely the worst type that you can have. Um, it's, it's bad. It's number one on the list. Uh, so not only do they do that, but Trend Micro also wants to inspect your secure web browsing traffic. And the only way to do that without annoying the user with a bunch of big red scary pop-ups is to install a root certificate to your local store, uh, which means just about anyone can grab that certificate and use it and man in the middle your connections. It's it's just poor design. And the, the root certificate thing, 
all antivirus companies do this, right? There's, there's hardly any of them out there that don't scan HTTPS traffic. Uh, and it's, it's only bad. It's just a bad thing. I, I know that back in the day, there's an antivirus manufacturer that would proxy everything through an internal application uh, and spit it back out to the system just to in, inspect traffic. And it really slowed everything down. It was awful. Well, do virus um, makers, I mean, malware writers, do they, do they do stuff on SSL traffic? I mean, I uh, yeah. Yeah. I guess now they realize a couple of years ago that, that SSL traffic they couldn't do. So if they just made their website SSL based, people wouldn't be able to do it. And now it's forcing the virus makers to do this, insert a, a man in the middle root certificate to capture the traffic. Well, a lot of a lot of malware authors and uh, in phishing attacks um, have been using HTTPS for quite a while. Uh, phishing in particular, because it lends a little bit of credibility if you know if someone sees a little lock in the corner. Um, but yeah, uh, malware authors are now using Let's Encrypt uh, certificates to secure their websites. Now, that's not saying anything bad about Let's Encrypt. It's their job to f provide certificates to anyone, any domain, any purpose, encrypt all the things forever just because we can. And I totally agree with that. Uh, but yes, malware authors and you know phishing sites are using HTTPS. It's it's just one of those. It just sounds scary now that we're telling you. Or when I heard this the first time, wait, AV people install a root certificate that can that can see the traffic, and it's like, well, they have to if they're trying to protect you on the internet with their on-demand core technology thing. They have to see what's inside those websites, and they're not doing it wrong. They're not malicious. They're just have, there's a robot. It scans it, and if it's bad, it, it flags something. But we don't know where it goes. Does it go back? Does it get saved? And now we're finding out that you can put a little listening game in to uh, capture all that and send it back and do things. Yeah, it's it's not that AV vendors are being malicious, right? They're, they're, they want to inspect traffic so they can catch viruses and malware in, in the wire, right? As it's coming to your computer, they go, ooh, that looks bad, and they pull it out or they block it. They stop the connection right there and say, all right, no more. <laughs> Their heart's in the right place, but adding root certificates is a, a big no-no, uh, unless you've got a very good reason. Uh, unless, you know, let's say you're an IT organization and you're adding computers to a domain. Well, those computers have to trust the domain, so yeah, you are adding, you know, a domain cert. You're adding a you know, an AD cert into those local computers that are joining the domain, that's okay. That's fine. That's what it's designed to do. Uh, but this man in the middle stuff with poorly crafted certificates, and as we've seen with Lenovo and Dell, it's not that hard, you know, especially if they leave the keys on the machine, especially if the cert is the same across every single install, it's not that hard to reverse engineer this stuff. It's not that hard to get the the password that's just the name of the company in the key and craft your own SSL certs. Um, so it's it's just not recommended. It's not really the right way to do this. On-system scanning is the better way to go if you're gonna do anything at all. Well, I mean, uh, where do we go from here? I, I think that leads us into the whole, do we need AV? I mean, Right. So even even the most uh, I want to say generous, uh, even the most generous of uh, research studies out there, legitimate research studies, have pegged AV effectiveness at you know five percent, seven percent. It's just it doesn't work the way it used to, right? We're no longer getting exploits that are weeks old attacking our systems because you know. Chrome is auto patched. Flash has said, "Hey, I'm not going to run unless I get patched." Um, and it, you know, it, if you're on Windows 8 and above, uh, you know, it just gets patched with Windows Update. The the way the viruses and malware propagate uh, is not through old ancient exploits. It's through zero days. It's through stuff people haven't discovered yet, and it's from just plain old tricking people. It's from phishing attacks. It's from just making the user install something. You know, you, someone shares a link on Facebook and you go, oh, cool, I want to see whatever video they're talking about. So you click on it, it says, hey, you need to install Media Player 97 to access uh, this video. Uh, click here to do that. And yes, put in your password in all of the admin boxes. 
because we totally need to install Media Player 97 so you can view this video. And people do that. That happens a lot. And then you've installed malware and now it's running through your system and guess what? It can now, you know, go to Facebook, open up like a hidden browser, go to Facebook and post the same link and then other people get infected. That happens a lot. Um, well, the, the problem is it's hard to explain to people that uh, antivirus is not needed because you and I know the difference. We know the how to change our browsing behavior, and we've talked. I mean, we've talked about this many, many times. People are afraid to go to different sites because they hear bad things, so they stick to Facebook, they stick to Twitter, and then they always hear, "Oh, virus! Don't download attachments." And while all this stuff, all this, all these ideas are good. They're not understanding the core concept of what it means. If you keep your system updated, if you if you use a different if you use a strong password, all that stuff stops or you update your computer, it stops a lot of the issues. But the people who are not listening to that, they're told to put in a an antivirus on. And that may be the best course of action because it will stop something. They're still gonna get fish, they're still not gonna pay the update, but you're hoping that it doesn't spread and I don't know. I don't know where I was going with that, but I figure we're talking to the wrong crowd. Yeah, it's it's definitely, you know, AV is not effective. It's not, I should say it's not as effective as it was back in the day. Uh, And and more importantly, um, you know, antivirus programs have been under scrutiny, uh, especially recently, because they're poorly made. Uh, A lot of them have flaws and expose flaws um, that you know, malicious actors and malware can take advantage of. You know, your your AV program probably l- runs, you know, not at the user level, but at an elevated, you know, system privilege level. At the very least, you know, normal admin level permissions, because it has to scan all files, it has to get direct access to everything, and it can't have anything in the way. So what happens if malware finds a vulnerability in that application and takes it over? That's called privilege escalation. That means that malware now is running in the context, it's running as the antivirus application, and it can do anything the system wants. It, it can do literally anything it can tell the system to do through Windows uh, with admin level permissions. Antivirus isn't made particularly well, uh, is what we've been finding out recently. Um, and one of the better ones is Microsoft Security Essentials, which you know on Windows 8 and above, that's built in. You get the updates and Windows update. You don't have to worry about it. It's all built in. It's right there. You don't ever have to touch it. It doesn't get in your way. And it's tuned in such a performance fashion that it shouldn't ever get in your way. It shouldn't bug you. It shouldn't bog down your system at all. It just does its thing and stays out, which is great. That's what you want an AV to do. Um, so no, don't buy AV. Don't buy McAfee. Don't buy Symantec. Don't buy Trend Micro. Don't buy AVG. Uh, don't install the free ones, right? They they do the same stuff. Uh, the only thing I, I can recommend, um, if you get infected with something, or if you know someone who's gotten infected with something, um, and you're not just going to wipe the machine and reload Windows on it, you should, because once the machine is infected, you really can't ever trust it again. Um, but if you just wanted to clean it up and hand it back to them, uh, malware bytes as a point in time, I'm running this once to clean up an issue, has worked great in the past for me. Um, I don't recommend paying for it. I don't think their on-demand scanner, their constant scan is really anything to write home about. Uh, it's you know, a- as about as ineffective as anything else out there. Uh, but just, just stick with the Microsoft stuff. If you're on Windows 7, Google Microsoft Security Essentials, uh, go to the, you know, I think it's the Microsoft.com download link. Let me let me make sure of that. Um, but, uh, yeah, it, it make sure you're getting it from a reputable place. And uh, that should be about it. That's really all you have to worry about as far as AV goes. I mean, and you're not going to be introducing really nasty stuff. I mean, you've, you've hit everything on the head. I mean, people who are like, who, who argue over which virus scan is the best are doing it as, as a theoretical level. It, it's... Yes, this one will find 99 out of 100. This one will find a different 99 out of 100. You still have that one left over, and you, and it's still going to infect your system. But it's already on your system. It's going to quarantine it, but how does it know exactly what files it is? And more importantly, 
you have to remember to update this. So you're spending continually an amount of time updating it. And it's not that hard to understand. Yeah, money. Updates. Yeah, and it's not, it doesn't update automatically. Or I mean, maybe it does, but it doesn't happen all the time. And it's probably really simple to figure out when the update schedule of these AV makers are. Remember, the bad guys are smart. They know what the AV, they have the same AV running on their test machines, knowing exactly what happened. So if they know they can get it out before that or find something, they know they have a few hours and that's all they really need. So, any, and then, then I love this one. So you get a, a virus game with the free computer. It goes for a couple of years or it goes for a year and then it you need to update it. And of course you don't pay it. Well, what can happen the next two months, three months, four months? Well, a lot. So now you're, taking a performance hit every single time you do something, it's not effective, it was never effective, and you're still at risk. And you're just wasting your computer's uh, cycles when you could have been doing something else. So, look, And it, it's you know probably introducing some nasty vulnerabilities into your system. Yeah, uh, and I mean, the idea is, if you know what you're doing and you listen to your, and I mean, if you're updating, you're just updating, if you're if you're not clicking on weird websites that you that, that say, hey, wait a second, click here, do this. And now a lot, look, I will give it to a lot of the places that they say, we do not accept passwords, do not give us passwords. Most places, any, any reputable company will never ask for a password inside the website unless you're logging into the account type thing. It's never, to update this, you need to put in your password. Remember, uh, what's it called? Programs want to be on your system. They're going to make it really easy to get onto your system. Putting in a password is not an easy thing. So, right, you know, just just use your head out there, and uh, you know, if if you do have Trend Micro, if you do have this this uh, password manager function, please stop using it. Um, there's there's a bug, and it looks like it has been patched in recent versions. Uh, but one of the bugs they had um, made it possible for you know, someone on the internet to dump all of your passwords out of your password vault and send it across the internet to anyone. Um, really big issue, really annoying. You know, if, if you're looking for password managers, stick to the big names. Uh, you know, I know we love LastPass here. Uh, we love KeePass. Stick to one of those. You know, LastPass is free for the mobile stuff. It's cheap. Uh, and KeePass is open source and free. Um, so I, I know we both wholeheartedly recommend yes. those. And you're saying, well, look, I'm in a library situation or I'm, I have young kids or I'm at school and this and that. I don't think virus scan is the answer. What I would do is I would silo off the network. Again, if you're, if you're the administrator of these types of computers, you, you probably know a little bit more or you know who is in charge of it. Silo off the computer somehow with a, heart, with a firewall or something like that. And... Uh, create images, create one central image that every night or whatever it is, you can just send it to, to your race. There are good programs that will do it on every reboot and really, and don't run as administrator, really lock it down so nobody can install anything, which is always a good practice. So, yeah. so the, the virus scan don't, won't necessarily help. It won't do it. This will be much more effective than running a virus scan after the fact the computer was infected. If, if you're in a, a corporate situation, um, you know, the, Again, we're we're gonna go full broken record mode for uh, until Flash and Java disappear. The things you can do to prevent nastiness on your computer network that you control: get rid of Flash, get rid of Java, install Chrome, make it the default browser for everything. Um, and uh, I totally lost the last one that I was well, gonna well, say. Well, if you need Flash, oh, uh, AdBlock, AdBlock. Yeah, and I think our our with, favorite ad block is uh, what is it? U Block Origin. Yes, U Block yes. Origin. Uh, with uh, with Chrome, Flash is built right in, um, and Adobe works very closely with Google on that. Um, so you you still get the the goodness of Flash that you need with Chrome, but because Chrome auto updates, you know that it's you know not gonna wreck anything. Or at least it, it'll be it'll be harder to mess something up. And the good part about uh, with Chrome, it disables Flash by default, so you have to click on something. So it doesn't load all those ads by default. I mean, it's like a natural ad blocker inside because it says, remember, Flash just spins up the fans and makes your computer hot and wastes battery. It does all this. 
And if you really want it, it's just a click away. If you really want to see that ad, it's a click away. Yeah. Um, and, you know, you don't have to go to odd, weird websites to, to get malware or get infected. Um, that's that's a misnomer. Um, a lot of the adware today spreads through perfectly legitimate websites. You might have heard of some of these, like msn.com, yahoo.com, um, or CNET, or Ars Technica, or CNN. Uh, or CNN. It's, it's called malvertising, and it's a big issue. It's where, you know, someone buys an ad, and they decide to upload a uh, what's essentially a zero day inside of the ad frame. The ad gets displayed. It does a drive-by download. Um, it just bypasses security because of an exploit, because of the exploit code they've got in it, uh, and it infects your system. And that happens. Uh, so blocking ads, yeah, it's a, it's a good security thing. Not only does it keep your, your users happy and less annoyed, uh, but it's also good for security. So, I mean, again, we're, we're saying everything we've said for the past year and a half, but we, we always get questions of, should we run AV? And we always say the short answer is, hey, no, you shouldn't. Here's a little thing yet of a reason why. You see why it doesn't really do anything, and we go from there. Other yeah. than that, I got nothing else on any of this. Do you have anything I, else? I think that's about it. Run your updates, uh, install AdBlock, uh, get rid of your AV, stick with Microsoft Security Essentials. If you're on uh, Windows 8 through 10, it'll uh, it'll be automatically there. Windows 7, go out and pull it. Okay. Well, then let's stop, and we will see everyone next week. Bye, see everyone. everyone.